Hello rugby fans, Rugby 25 Early Access has been live now for what, about four days and I'm bringing this video to you today to give you my thoughts on the Early Access so far, what we have playable. Before I get into a game and give you my thoughts on the actual gameplay and state of the game, couple of bits of Rugby 25 news we're on the rugby 25 steam page i'll be going down uh, the steam page shortly because there's a little bit of information there that may have slipped through the radar but i'm going to fire up the old twitter and give you a little bit of news as you can see there on ross simmons the ceo of big ant studios twitter page big ant studios have posted that smaller incremental patches for rugby 25 will be reasonably constant in between major updates there will be a roadmap released this week so if you're looking at the tiebreak early access of course another big ant studios game that was in early access for many many months i think it's about six or seven months i think at the minute they've reached early access update six in that time so that's six major updates this post here is saying that there will be smaller incremental patches for Rugby 25 in between those big updates. So expect those smaller patches to affect things like gameplay, um, the appearance of the game, and then the major updates that come a bit more uh, spaced will in probably include content, game modes, things like that. It also says that a roadmap will be released this week tiebreak had a roadmap i'll chuck it on screen now and it basically gives you a rough guess of when to expect different parts of content whether that's teams leagues different game modes like career mode online play things like that so by the end of this week we should have a much bigger picture on when we should expect different updates now if we go back over to the old steam page like i said we'll we read through it so yeah, if we just read a little bit on the about this section, welcome to the ultimate rugby gaming experience, Rugby 25. Whether you're a seasoned pro or new to the sport, Rugby 25 immerses you in the fast-paced, hard-hitting action like no rugby video game before it. From the grassroots of local clubs through to the grand stages of the world's biggest international tournaments, every detail has been meticulously crafted to bring the excitement and intensity of the sport to your hands. Rugby 25 is where legends will be born and history will be made. Now, when I loaded this up last night, I think it was, there was a bit more detail, detail on game modes and things like that to inspect. Expect it mentioned career mode uh, and stuff like that. And it had a little bit of information about career mode. That seems to have been updated and gone for now. I like the wording of uh, grassroots local clubs would that mean the career mode could be similar to like the cricket games where you start off at the club level work your way up perhaps that maybe confirms pro player career mode i'm not sure and then upon final release rugby 25 will include over 140 international teams including new zealand south africa england france and australia plus over 150 club sides in 11 competitions with URC, English Premiership, Top 14, MLR and Super Rugby. Of course, MLR is a new one that's been confirmed over the last few days in the very, very early Rugby 24 early um, trailers and information. It did mention Pro D2 as well. So we've got lots and lots to come over the development of Rugby 25. You look at that, 140 international teams. 150 club sides you're looking at almost 300 rugby teams that you can play with on rugby 25 and i'm really looking forward to it like i said when i fired this up last night i had a bit more information there on some modes um, nothing spectacular but had a little bit of detail about the career mode and like i said up there it mentions um, grassroots level rugby so that's exciting as well so now we fired up the game we're in rugby 25 of course you've probably already seen my first impressions video that was very very raw literally the very first time i fired up the game 
Over the weekend, I've put a lot more hours into it. And needless to say, I've been having fun. It's not uh, perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I've sort of found a way to try and get the best out of it. For anyone who's interested, this is how I'm setting things up. This is my camera settings. We've got the low angle kick fixed for camera switch and I'm with the end balance crew on the gameplay camera side of things. I've reduced the commentary right down so that I can speak over this gameplay but I am a fan of the commentary. I've also put out recently some AI versus AI gameplay videos which include the commentary and I'm definitely enjoying it. Hopefully that gets up to notch throughout early access and in the full game, particularly when we get the proper competitions and things like that. Hopefully they mention the Premiership, the URC and all that sort of stuff. Again, on screen now is the controls. Feel free to pause it at any point if you want to see any of this. Um, the one thing that does stand out for me so far is on the LB and RB uh, buttons, it mentions offload. I haven't really yet seen an offload in the game, so that's something to look at as well. Um, we've got the competition mode where you can set up a competition. Uh, you can use random teams, you can do a league or knockout. If you do a league, you can also select if there's going to be a knockout at the end of the league and how many clubs will be in that knockout. So say you selected eight teams. Once the league's finished, if the top four, uh, if you finish in the top four, you will go through to the knockout stages. Season play each other times. That's not worded very well, but I believe that will be how many times you would play a team in a season. If you put one, you would play those teams in your league only once two you'd play them twice you can go all the way up to eight so yeah that'll be pretty good i'm debating whether to put a little competition series on the channel let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that where i'll put sort of five or six teams in a little league and we'll do a little competition series uh, while we wait for more content to be added if we go over to the play now men's match another thing i've noticed here you'll see there's an option for a second controller so does that mean once online is available you could do co-op on a team so say uh, me and one other person on this side versus someone else and someone else on that side so that's quite exciting who knows you may even be able to add more controllers there as early access develops like in my first thoughts video i'll just run through the teams that are available we've got france you can select home and away kit for france we've got uruguay again home and away kit we've got namibia home and away kit we've got the mighty spring box who have got both kits as well scotland with both their kits tonga both their kits we've got australia the wallabies there just the one kit for the wallabies we've got georgia home and away looking good we've got japan home and away we've got argentina again with both kits we've got samoa both kits available we've got chile both kits available we've got espana looking good we got the united states of america two very nice looking kits there we've got hong kong china we've got brazil with two kits available we got zimbabwe we've got croatia who i believe are the lowest rated team on the game currently at 64 they've just got the one kit we've got paraguay Again, just the one kit. We've got Uganda. They have a home and away. We've got Sweden. Just the home kit. And they are, they are back to France. Of course, when you're playing this, you've got to remember that France and Australia are the only teams who have the photogrammetry implemented. And not only that, they are the only two teams you can use that have the real names of the players. If you're selecting any of the other teams then their names are just their number. So say the fullback, he'll be called 15, for example. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit disappointing, but hopefully that'll be one of the first things they improve over early access. Let's fire into a game now anyway. Let's be the mighty Georgians, and we will play against... Let's go for... I want to play as Samoa, I think see some of the old Samoan might right so we've selected our two teams over here we've got 
half length we can go all the way up to a full match i may do that for a video just for a laugh i'm on the hard difficulty currently i'm going to reduce that down to medium so that i can explain some of the things in the game a bit better uh, the stadiums available are the Stade de France, the Montevideo Stadium, we got the Madrid Stadium, we got the Estadio Municipal German Becker, we've got the Windhoek Stadium, and we've got the Claremont Stadium. Now, I'm not 100% sure, I'm not really up on stadiums from the southern hemisphere and some more obscure ones, but I think the only two official ones at the minute are Stade de France and the Claremont Stadium. I'm not 100% sure on these ones in the middle here, but we'll fire up. Let's go. Ugh. The only thing is the shadows. You've got to be very wary of the shadows on this game. This is something I know they're already looking at via some of the feedback I've implemented to some of the dev team already. They are looking at the shadows and they are very, very coarse so far and do stand out a lot. We'll go with the Madrid Stadium, I think, for this one. Um, you can choose day or night. A few times I've selected night. It's been very, very awkward to play. It's been very sort of foggy and sunsetty, which has not been great. So we'll go with daytime. You can select golden point, no extra time, sudden death uh, there for the extra time. We've got the standard uh, uh, rugby ball, uh, Gilbert, Gilbert, whatever you want to say. And you've got the Big Ant Studios ball as well. So let's get into a match and I'll give you some more thoughts. So here we go. We're fired up into an exhibition match. One of the positives so far for me is I do like the way the game looks. I mean, a few people have mentioned it looks a bit cartoony, particularly the grass, a bit play doh -y. Of course, things like that can be improved on. But I think the kits on the players, the teams that have photogrammetry I like, a lot of the cutscenes I like, particularly uh, for kicking and things like that, kicking off the tee, um, I think that looks nice and realistic. Of course, hopefully more cutscenes and bits and bobs get added throughout the game cycle. Um, for starters, when you're in a competition as well, I would love to see, say you're playing a premiership, a lot of that implemented, maybe premiership scoreboards, premiership advertising boards. I'd love the commentary to be able to mention the premiership and perhaps talk about the table and how teams are doing, things like that. Another thing with the commentary I like is there is a sideline reporter. Hopefully they do a bit more on that as well throughout uh, early access, perhaps mentioning if a player's been injured, how he's doing, something like that. I also love the fact that there's a replay, perfect for content creators. You can go in there uh, do a lot with the replay system, perfect for thumbnails, perfect for making highlights, packages, and things like that. So as we get into the game, one of the first things I would like to see changed is the button for kickoff. You can currently see it's Y. It's at the top of the controller. It just feels a little bit unnatural. I'd like to see that come down to the bottom face button, depending on what camera, uh, what controller you are using. So instantly we can see the rucking. Um, yeah, this is one of the things that needs its biggest update and change, really. At the minute, it feels like it's in two parts for me. It feels like they've got the Rugby League Live tackling, because as you'll see there, a lot of the tacklers uh, seem to take place quite high on the body. And then the player um, hits the deck, and for whatever reason, it takes quite a few moments for them to come to the breakdown now that is a lovely lovely kick so yeah it just feels like it's in two parts if you watch a union match once the tackle has happened everyone jumps in now now and it's it's not happening it feels like it's in two parts you've got to wait several seconds for the players to join that breakdown i would also like to see a bit of a tutorial on the rucking system at the minute, I'm just not sure what way to do things. Do you bind the players to the ruck first, then try and tackle contest, and then press steal? During the game as well, it doesn't mention anything at all about steal. steal. It just says tackle contest and bind to the ruck. We've managed to steal it there, and now we're away. See, I would like them to put, perhaps, steal on the screen. If you look at the... Um, 
we've already got our first bug there uh, and a scrum. If you look at the controls, X is steel, but that never appears on screen. Here is our first scrum. Let's take a look at the scrum. I think that the scrum's okay. I'm not, again, I'm not 100% sure what we're doing with the scrum just because there's no tutorial. But I believe you've got to press the two triggers at the top once the bars hit the green area. Um, the tackling is very obscure. If you're using the analog stick for tackling, it is near on impossible. I'll show you there. Look, there's no hit detection. The players are not trying to tackle the man with the ball. They just go straight past. I'll show you again there. Um, even if you line it up, the tackle does go straight through the player. Um, so I basically do not use the analog stick at the minute because it's broken. There you go. As you can see, just go straight through the player. What I've been finding, it doesn't say anything on the controls as we steal another ball and make our way up the pitch. Nice little tap tackle there. What I've been finding is I've been using the B button rather than the analog stick and that seems to provide a bit more of a secure tackle. Now let's get on to passing. And for me to make things a little bit better, I basically... Don't do anything but the targeting pass. I just find that the quick passing is all over the place. Lovely grubber there. Can we touch it down? We cannot. Um, yeah, I'm, I'll show you as an example in a minute when I use the quick passing. But at the minute, I just find it's too unreliable and all over the place. But if we use a quick pass now, I mean, that one's okay. That one's okay. I mean, of course, now I'm now I'm doing this. It, it comes out all right, but I'll try again. Um, just whip the ball away. Like there, for example, instead of throwing it across, it goes backwards. Um, I'm just finding it a little bit unpredictable. I've been using the target passing all of the time because I just feel... It's much easier to get fluid passes to the players you want. Oop, Samoa have picked up the ball there. Again, using B to tackle, as you'll see, it seems a lot more secure. Um, but yeah, the quick passing for me is too unpredictable at the minute. Um, there we go, we've stolen it again. So we're getting a bit of... Like, here we go, quick passing. See, it's going backwards there. Instead of going right like that, it's going backwards. That one there, way too loopy can certainly form an interception. So I've been using the targeting passing all of the time as we break now. I do like that. I like I like the speed of the players on the ball. I think that's okay. I think uh, the running's okay. Of course, the old snaking through the gaps is a little bit overpowered. Um, as you see there, my number six is that got some skills as well that we can use i'll show them off a bit more later as you can see when you do use the targeting passing the pods do line up of course there's a lot more to do with the ai of the players particularly for me when running on to passing ah that's another thing that's a bit of an issue when you press tackle contest it's also the same button as box kick so sometimes you can have an issue like that uh, where I was trying to contest the tackle and ended up box kicking. Uh, but back to the, yeah, the player AI movement, I think, particularly with passing, if we see it now, um, the players aren't running onto the pass, which means breaking the line is uh, quite hard. It's some more turn over the ball there, which is a bit frustrating. They've kicked it out for half time. See, I'd like the players to be running onto the pass. It makes for a much more exciting and entertaining game, more realistic. You know, if you want to throw it out to a pod, the forward should be running onto that pass uh, to try and gain all momentum possible. So, yeah, a lot to do, better to do with the AI. Um, but, yeah, I've been finding the games a lot more enjoyable with the passing if you just use the targeting one all of the time. Obviously, it's totally up to you what you do. Um, well, until I do that sort of pass. Of course, the odd floaty pass does come into it, which is not great. I don't find the kicking too bad so far. 
In fact, I quite like the kicking in-game. I think the only thing is um, it probably needs to be a bit more responsive. Um, we, we have got the old glitch again. Luckily, we managed to get that in time. Uh, the thing is with using the targeting passing, you've got to be careful um, because it does glitch sometimes as we break through the gap. Bit of a grubber kick. That's nice. When I was mentioning the kicks, yeah, I'm not... I don't mind it too much at the minute. I think the kicking in play is okay. I quite like it. I think the one thing that perhaps needs to be slowed down is the bounce of the ball and the run of the ball. Sometimes it does go very, very fast. Let's see if they kick it away for an example. At the minute with the rucking system, I'm basically just spamming bind and... Bind and tackle contest and then hitting steel at the end and hoping for the best. Um, oh, lovely sidestep there. Yeah, in terms of the kicking, I'm quite enjoying it so far. If they just slow down the momentum of the ball a little bit, I think we'll be okay. Um, in terms of kicking at goal, I think kicking at goal needs a little bit of work at the minute. It does seem fairly easy. I think they just need to add in a few more variables, you know, perhaps wind and stuff like that, um, just to give it a bit more of a challenge. I mean, look at that ball. That ball bounced incredibly high there. And um, we're going for another grubber. I think the grubbers seem okay. Um, and, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the kicking in play at the minute. Um, but, yeah, the kicking for goal... Does need a bit of work, I think. Can we get a 50-22? No, not too much going on there. Again, using the B button for tackling. Just seem to have a lot more success. We've got a lot of box kicking from the opposition teams. Nice take there. Another big kick. Can that bounce to the right? It doesn't. We are chasing the player down. I've had a few TMO things... As well, the TMO is in this game. Um, so he is available. He does come up, particularly when the ball's held up or when a player has just dabbed the ball down instead of uh, diving for it. It's gone to the TMO a couple of times. I think it still needs a bit of work. There's not too much to it, really. Just the referee pointing to the TMO. Hopefully, I'll try and score a try shortly. Um, one thing I've also picked up on is the, uh, oh nice, when you're diving for the try line, the player just stops still, there's no momentum there at all, I'd say that pass to Y there, um, needs a bit of work, he needs to be running onto it, um, but yeah, the, the player sort of stops still before putting the ball down, which is a bit frustrating. You want there to be a bit of flow, a bit of momentum, and you want the player to really um, be following through with that. We'll do it now. See, he sort of stops dead. He stops dead there rather than diving and following through. It needs to be a fluid animation, I find. It wasn't too bad there, and there are some diving animations for tries, um, but a lot of the time, particularly if you've broken, you're just clear... He's sort of ru he's running at full pit pun, and then he just stops and puts the ball down. So here's some in-play kicking. I like that you get the timer, the shot clock timer. I like these little cutscenes. These look quite realistic, and of course you've got the timer there telling you how long you've got to kick. I love this low angle. I really do, really like it. Of course, again we're holding uh, Y. For the kicking, I think I've even missed that one. I think that should be a different button. Um, loads of power. We've missed the conversion. So I was saying earlier about how easy it was. It's not entirely easy, um, but a lot of the straighter ones are. Again, I would like that kicking button to go down to the bottom. So on my controller, it would be A uh, on the Xbox. Uh, it just seems a bit obscure to press the Y button. Um... But yeah, a few more variables needed. If we had a bit of wind, um, that would certainly help things, make it a bit more difficult. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried about that. Not too worried about that. Add the wind, 
make it a bit more difficult and the, the kicking from the tee will be bearable, will be fine. I'm still a big fan of the Rugby 08 kicking. I really love that and the targeting system with the arrow and everything. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the kicking. Um, we'll try, if we can turn it over before the 80 minutes, we'll try, we'll try a drop goal or something. I will say that the kicking in play, um, I think the little circle meter needs to be a bit clearer. Quite a few, I don't know whether you men are completely hold the ball down for the entire time or you meant to sort of hit it into a perfect area. It's not very clear there. Um, another thing I forgot to mention when I was talking to you about the Steam page earlier and that when I previously looked, there was a lot more information on game modes and things in the career mode. Yeah, with the career mode mentioned, it also said that there would be a full training mode. So I'm looking forward to that getting in there and hopefully it'll give us a bit more help and indication what to do with the more difficult parts of the game like the rucking, the breakdowns and the in-play kicking. So like I say, at the, at the minute, I'm just not sure, 100% sure what I need to do and in what order, um, which is a bit of a shame, uh, particularly with the rucking and particularly with the kicking in play. Like I said, I'll try and do a drop goal or something in a minute if, if it lets me get the ball. Nice pickup. Yeah, hopefully you can see that I'm certainly having a bit more fun with it. I'm, I've, I've found ways of making it a bit more fluid. Um, using the B as the tackle button for whatever reason. Using the targeting system all the time. You can see where the players are lining up. I can fire out a big pass there to uh, that player there. Unfortunately, like I said, without them running onto it, it's really hard to get some nice flowing movements. Big long pass out wide there, which is nice. Yeah, if we could just get the players running onto the ball, that would make a huge difference. Now, let's try a 50-22, and I'll show you what I mean. There's no... I, I don't know if I'm being silly, because I'm looking at the targeting as well at the same time. But the, the actual meter on the circle doesn't seem to be very clear at all. We've turned that ball over. Oh, we've almost turned that ruck over. But yeah, we'll try and finish the game with a drop goal or something if we get the ball back. Yeah, I'm certainly ending the weekend a lot more positive than I was after my first game. Of course, I wanted to get a video out as soon as possible when playing this game. Um, so it was rough. It was my literal first impressions of the game. Now that I've sunk proper hours into it i'm a bit more confident that we have a good foundation like i said some simple simple changes would make it so much more enjoyable just players running onto the ball a bit of help with the breakdown and things like that we've got skill moves as well if i try and get free here um not, uh, that that is a prop there and that is another thing i want to mention i think the props are way too quick um way too quick indeed uh, they need to be a bit bigger and much slower in my opinion so that was another thing i wanted to mention um, let's try we can try and break the line at some point oh they've turned it over unfortunately and like now there's i'm pressing the buttons but no one is joining the ruck at all no one is joining the breakdown sometimes they can be quite quick but it's too too sporadic for me. They're kicking a ball away. They want full time. So I'm not going to be able to show you the skills or a drop goal. But yeah, that's my thoughts currently. Like I said, a lot more confident than I was after my first game. I found ways to make it a lot more enjoyable using the targeting system, using B for tackle. And uh, yeah, I'm hopeful. I mean, like I mentioned at the start of the video, there's going to be so many updates. Get on the Big Ant Studios forum. Put your feedback up there. Uh, they're really listening. If you follow the development of tiebreak, they're constantly listening to the feedback and implementing that into the game. So they will be looking at our thoughts and making changes. There's going to be many small updates along the way, gameplay tweaks and things like that. We're also going to get big early access updates, which is going to include content in game modes, 
by the end of this week we should have a road map so we've got a bit more of a clearer picture on how things are going to go but yeah i'm certainly more positive than i was after my first game i think with major updates you think this is a long road ahead six seven months uh, at least of development and feedback and updates so it's going to be a completely different game we've got to look at the bigger picture certainly not on the big ant studios payroll as i mentioned many times i just really want a good rugby video game and big ant are the only studio taking on this huge challenge so what is the point of being insulting and critical just be constructive give them your thoughts give you give you give them your ideas and let's try and build a good rugby game together if you want to take your feedback a step further then why not join the rugby gaming network discord server we've got over 400 members in there talking all things rugby gaming talking about rugby 25 sharing clips things like that link is in the description below drop a like if you've enjoyed this video leave a comment down below let me know what you thought of my first thoughts after four or so days on the game have you got any other advice on how to make it more enjoyable currently like my targeting passing b for tackle things like that let me know your thoughts on rugby 25 as a whole if you haven't already then please do move that subscribe button and if you're new around here then welcome to the bears gamers